All right. Hi, today we're welcoming Bob Robert Krenzel, goes by Robert on his books, and he lives here in Kansas City, the Kansas City area, uh, Lenox, or was it Shawnee? Shawnee, right? Shawnee, Kansas. So he's a local author, and he will be at the local author fair up at Woodneath in Liberty. Uh, is that next weekend? It is. It is. It's next a week from weekend. Next, a week from today. Is yes. Yes. So if you're available and you want to come out and see a bunch of local authors, you should come out. They're all different genres, adult to children. And um, Rob, Robert and I both write for young adults. Um, so we'll be in that same area. They have it divided by genre this year. So that's kind of neat. And they'll, they, I think it's one to four thirty, isn't that right? Yes. That it's open. Yeah. Okay. And so that's going to happen next weekend. But I wanted to introduce you to Robert because he does write for young adults. And I know a lot of you have teens and especially for boys, I would think his books are really good. So I'm going to stop talking and let Robert talk about why he writes and what he writes and a little bit about his, his work. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. And, and one of, one of our cats joined me just as we started recording. So pretty cat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's a zoom meeting. What would it be without a cat? <laughs> um, oh, uh, yeah, I'm Bob Krenzel, uh, Robert Krenzel on, uh, is my author name. Um, I started writing um, when uh, it was sort of on a dare for, uh, for my kids. Uh, my kids were uh, sort of in the young adult range. Um, and uh, we were, I have, reading has always been very important in, in our family. And so, uh, my daughter was struggling with uh, a, a reading assignment in school, and so we had to do a uh, um, a drive uh, out to St. Louis for an athletic event. Um, and uh, so my my wife rented the on and the audio book so we could listen to it together. And um, so we we finished uh, on the way back from St. Louis, and it was a uh, I was I was unimpressed uh, with the book and and I I said something along the lines of uh, that was terrible I could do better than that and oh. uh, threw in the back seat uh, threw the gauntlet down um, and so I I decided that I was going to try writing a novel um, nice. and and I've always been uh, I've always been a little bit of a history nerd so uh, it was sort of uh, so historical fiction sort of seemed natural mm -hmm. uh, and um i i'm a new jersey native uh i grew up with you know um you know washington was here um all the you know trenton princeton um kind of being familiar with american revolution stuff uh and i was at the time i was sort of um it had piqued my interest again so uh, that the sort of there was sort of a confluence there of uh, uh, and it has been uh, it's been fascinating for me to uh, to learn. Um, it's an excuse for me to go visit old battlefields, which is another one of my favorite things to do. And uh, it's a uh, I, I also especially enjoy um, every now and then I find out that that I I inspired someone to learn more about um our, our nation's founding story uh mm -hmm. so that that always feels pretty good mm -hmm. so that's so. really the reason that you write is because you want the the kids today to really understand it more than with just you know names and dates what's behind yeah. it yeah there, one of the things i learned um in, in researching my first book is that the the people who fought in the american revolution um that there were a lot of people who really believed what they were in what they were fighting for mm -hmm. uh, on both sides. Um, my, my first book is called This Glorious Cause. Uh, that that was a term that I heard used quite often uh, in, in researching and uh, first person accounts of the revolution that, that people believed in the cause they were fighting for. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it sort of it sort of resonated um, with me. Uh, and, and I also, um, 
I don't think I realized it when I started writing, but I've come to appreciate it a little bit more uh, as time has gone on. Um, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm spent 24 years in the army. I'm a retired soldier. Uh, and it is a, uh, it's also, um, a, a way for me to, um, it's therapeutic almost, um, in, in some ways, um, to, to sort of grapple with some of the things that I, I experienced and dealt with, um, in, in that time. So, um, the, as, as, as time has gone on, I've come to appreciate that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And having that first person knowledge about it, I'm sure makes your books resonate with, you know, that real feeling. I, I like to think so. Uh, one, a, and, and again, this person is slightly biased, but, uh, mm -hmm. although I, I served with, um, in, with a couple of times in Iraq, um, he, he, uh, he left a review that said on Amazon that said, uh, if you're a combat veteran, you should read this book. If you love a combat veteran, you should read it twice. Oh. Um, so, nice. uh, yeah, yeah, I, I tried to, um, you know, these are the, the war for independence figures very prominently in these books. Mm -hmm. uh, but by no means am I trying to glorify war. Uh, to quite, right. the, quite, quite the contrary, I, I try to highlight the fact that there's a cost. Right. Um, You're uh, fighting for peace. Yes. Yes. And yeah. and it's cool. and and not not all of the not all the wounds are visible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully that comes. What, what? How many books have you written? Uh, I have written six. I've been working on number seven for for a while, and <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping to get that one done. Um, oh, where, you, where are they? Do you have a picture, or can you show I, your books? And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna set the cat down because this will be much less awkward with. Um, so this is uh, book number one. Is this glorious cause? Um, oh, the, I love the cover. Thank you. Um, the the stories follow uh, my protagonist Gideon Hawk um, and his his love interest Ruth um, they start off in Lexington Massachusetts mm -hmm. uh, and this 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 book sort of takes us through Lexington Concord and the siege of Boston okay and what I was trying very hard to do was follow the progress of the revolution through kind of through Gideon's eyes and, and, and Ruth's to, to some extent. Mm -hmm. Um, the second one, uh, is times that try men's souls. Uh, this what, is what's that on the bottom of the cover there. It is the uh, declaration of independence. Oh, okay. And this is, it, it picks up, it starts on July 9th, 1776 when, um, Washington ordered that the uh, declaration of independence be read to the troops. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes us through um, some very dark times for for the cause, uh, and it 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 kind of culminates after the Battle of Princeton um, mm -hmm. uh, through sort of the some of the lowest points of the mm -hmm. revolution and um, what what uh, what some call the you know the ten uh, ten glorious days or ten extraordinary days of mm -hmm. between Trenton and Princeton when when Washington sort of turned things around. Um, the third one is, uh, a, a nest of hornets. Um, this one won the Kansas notable book award. I'm very proud of that. Oh. Um, and this <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> the, the cover on this one is a little darker. It's a, it's a dark picture of a dark forest. Yeah. Uh, I chose that because, um, a lot of the scenes are set in the, at night, but, uh, mostly because it's a, uh, uh, there's there's sort of a spy story uh involved in this one oh, so there's intrigue there, there is intrigue uh it, it's interesting when i started this series I, I had no intention of writing that book um but as i was researching the, the second one uh i happened on a chapter about the forage war in new jersey in the winter of 1777 and uh i was i was it was something i was totally unaware of uh mm -hmm. during that 
in New Jersey, there was there was a skirmish or battle almost every day, um, many of which happened in places that I either lived or went to school or worked or played um, as I was growing up. Uh, so hmm. it was it was to learn about that. Yeah, and I felt compelled to to write about it. So cool. um, yeah, and then um, book number four is a constant thunder. Uh, this is um, this is set at the Battle of Saratoga, um, okay. and um, sort of in in seventy seven when the British were trying to make their way down the Hudson, and uh, the they were they were stopped. Um, it was it was very close to um, had they succeeded, it might have been the end. Um, but uh, the British army was captured, and that sort of I, I sort of uh, that one sort of culminates with um, the good news making it to Paris um, because that sort of triggered the French to get involved in the war. So, huh. uh, so I was, uh, so and that I thought one, everything ended in 76. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I do. Uh, I do author visits um, to okay. eighth, um, to middle schools um, and, and because the eighth grade curriculum deals with the American revolution. Mm -hmm. and, one of the things I often open with is is talking about having having the students name events during the American Revolution, mm -hmm. and typically we can come up with with uh, five, six, seven, uh, per, you know, kind of discrete events, uh, and so and then I I ask them how long the war was, and, and you know usually we we can account for about a week um, out of essentially uh eight years between yeah. yeah between the first shots and the 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 signing of the peace of the peace treaty excuse me oh okay so so that yeah, that that is uh, there's so many stories and and i i'm trying to fill in some of those blanks that's good that's yeah, neat yeah. and okay. uh it's it's exciting yeah and after 77 what do you have there so uh, the fifth book is uh, it's called uh, a bloody day's work, mm -hmm. um, and this uh, um, for for this one for the front and back I, I I've got in contact with an author named Jeff Trexler. He has some some wonderful work. He did a um, a, a study of a uh, Pennsylvania uh, soldier of the Pennsylvania line. Um, mm -hmm. That's a, um, very very it it. it depicts very well the soldiers I'm writing about in this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one takes us from through Valley Forge and the Battle of Monmouth. Um, Which was when? Uh, that was in that was in 1778. Oh, okay. Uh, and um, so that was a uh, sort of <laughs> in in researching that one, um, my my family and I were on a, went on a trip back uh, back east. And uh, I, I dragged them to Valley Forge in Monmouth, um, and uh, so they, they got they got to experience a little bit of the madness for that one. So that that was a lot of fun. Did you go uh, in the winter? Uh, we we did not. We went in the summer. Okay, um, it was appropriate for Monmouth, but Valley Forge not you know not as much. Um, but it was it was it was a fascinating uh, experience for me. Um, some of the, at Valley Forge, they reconstructed some of the cabins mm -hmm. uh, soldiers lived in. Really great experience to kind of see what that was like. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and the folks there have been super, were super helpful in helping me kind of understand a little bit more about what things were really like um, mm -hmm. for there. Yeah. Okay. So that was 78 and then 70, 78 and 79. My, my sixth book uh, is A Bitter Harvest. Um, this was, uh, this one took me a while to write. It was, it was a little bit of a challenge because this one deals with, um, the campaign against the Iroquois in 1779, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Iroquois nation or the Iroquois Confederacy sort of split up, uh, and most of them went on the British side, um, a few of the the uh, Onita and Tuscarora um, joined the the uh, American side, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was really catastrophic for for the the Iroquois nation. Um, I, before that time, they were 
they were sort of the superpower, if you will, the, the indigenous superpower uh, in North America. Uh, and that was sort of the beginning of the end of that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they really, one of the, one of the things that inspired writing that um, after I, after I came back from Afghanistan, my wife and I um, spent a few days at the Finger Lakes on, on Seneca Lake in, in, uh, in New York near Ithaca. And uh, it's called Seneca Lake because the Seneca people uh, lived there. That was their homeland. Um, you, there is no, it, there is almost no sign that they were there. Uh, really? Because, you know, because the, the Sullivan expedition of 1779 did such an exceptional job of um, destroying uh, the, the infrastructure they depended on, their, their homes, their, their crops, orchards. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, uh, in, in this story, Gideon Hawk is captured, uh, by the, by the Seneca, uh, and, um, after a trial, he is, he is adopted into the tribe. Hmm. Um, he, he learns a little bit about, about them, uh, and then he makes the decision to escape, uh, and, he is, he is, since he knows the area, he's sent back with the Sullivan expedition um, to return mm -hmm. to, and uh, destroy his native family. Um, so uh, that was a little bit of a challenge to write. I um, bet. Yeah. he would have been torn. Yes. Yeah. So there is uh, his, <laughs> his, his arc in that story is, is pretty, I think it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, and so I, I really tried to show, uh, I, I tried to show the, the balance for both sides, you know, kind of, and that was an interesting way to show, um, you know, try to show that aspect of the war from both sides if I could. Mm -hmm. I admit, though, one of the challenges is obviously, um, I am, I am not Native American. Um, so I had to, I felt I had to be very careful in, in how yes. I approach You do. Um, I, deliberately told the story from Gideon's point of view yep. as an outsider looking in. Yeah. Uh, I really did not want to, you know, cross that line. So. Right. I understand. So are there any, like, I have a lot of homeschool folks that read my blog and things. Are there any scenes or like graphic things or like language things they should be aware of? Um, I, I, uh, <laughs> it's interesting, my, 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 uh, my editor for um, most of the books kind of prided herself on, uh, she called them clean edits, um, that she didn't want to do, um, she wanted it to be family friendly. So, uh, and I also, I don't write anything that I would not let my kids read. I mean, my, my daughter's in college now, my son is, is off adulting. Um, but when when I started writing these, they were uh, they they were eleven and fifteen, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my my goal was to write nothing that they I wouldn't let them read. Um, so that said, um, you know I'm writing about about yep. common. But I think it's great that you're making history like come alive for these kids <laughs> um, and filling in those blanks because you know history is. When I was in school, I always thought it was dry, you know. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite, but now I love history. I love research and everything. But um it can be, but it doesn't have to be, you know. Um so I, you know, I, I, I try very much to um, you know, there there is there's some love involved. Um, there's no nothing no graphic adult content um you know there are people are killed um there, mm -hmm. there's not around that um i i but i try to balance that there's there's no there's no unnecessary gore i don't go into unnecessary detail um but i do try to bring home the gravity of the thing mm -hmm. uh, so you know i i in my mind um you know, seventh, eighth graders should be mm -hmm. fine. Um, and, you know, 
I think, I think kids are able to deal with, you know, I don't think we often give them enough credit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand. Okay. But, uh, but yes, I, I, I try not to, you know, we're talking about soldiers. The, the language is okay. It is, um, I'm trying, trying to think how to put this. Um, some of the things they say may have been, uh, no one would bat an eye at now at the time they might not <laughs> in mm -hmm. the seventh. Some of these things might have been, you know, considered pretty crude, um, yeah. you know, but yeah. I, I, I try not to go there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing you on Saturday and, and looking through your books and stuff. Me too. Yeah. I was, I was at, I was at the uh, local author fair last year. It was a great event. Yeah. I didn't go last year, but I did the a couple of years before that, but I was in the children's department then. <laughs> I have a set of children's books too. Oh, so cool. I have like um, early readers for second grade. Um, they're short chapter books for building character kind of things with animals. And then I have these young adult novels that I'm doing now. So mm. still character building. I think building character through story is a great thing. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, um, we've passed our limit, so I need to kind of cut it short, but we can see you Saturday, and I'm going to post this actually earlier than normal so that everybody will see it before Saturday, uh, sure. and so I thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm very excited about it, and please let me know when it's, when it's up. I will send it to you. Great. So thank you can share it, too. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Thank sir. you so much. Yep, and I'll okay. see you next week. Okay, bye.